Praise the Lord. So from Genesis 4, verse 7, he says there, If you do well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. This is the story of, of Cain um, and Abel, where he's, he's slayed his brother, and he's trying to pretend as if, as if nothing is, is wrong, as if he's done nothing. In the easy-to-read version, it says, You know that if you do what is right, I will accept you. But if you don't, sin is ready to attack you. That sin will want to control you, but you must control it. In the complete Jewish Bible, it says, If you are doing what is good, you shouldn't, hold, shouldn't you hold your head high? And if you don't do what is good, sin is crouching at the door. And uh, this was my encouragement here to you today, was not to get tired of doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. I was trying to understand this dream of seeing this snake at the door. You know, this door that was cracked open and what was it about? And, you know, my, in my, my immediate instinct was to say, you need to shut the door. And the Lord says, no, I want you to look, look at this again. It's, it's not about you just getting up and shutting the door. I begin to understand that sin, is my first point here, is looking for an opportunity to come in. Sin, Satan, is looking for an opportunity to dominate your life. And actually, he can't get access to your life. Something in you that is compromising your life and, and opening that door. That door is not just left open because it's open, it's cracked open by sin. When we start doing the things that aren't right, we give an opportunity for the enemy to gain entrance into our life. And we have to be watchful over the things that we're doing. So I put, don't get tired of doing the things that are right because sometimes it can seem, um, like the psalmist sometimes would say, you know, like, why are the wicked prospering? You know, it would look like sometimes that righteous people can't get ahead. It would look like the people who are cutting corners are the most prosperous people. And the psalmist says, my, my foot almost slipped when I considered the prosperity of the wicked. And when you watch and see how people are prospering, as was happening to the psalmist, you can begin to lose your, um, your confidence in what you're doing. Um, I didn't plan to say this this morning, but... but I feel in the spirit that the Lord was saying to me a few days ago, he's going to flick the switch. There's, there's, there's coming a time where he's going to just flip the switch, where everything that we've been doing that has, that has amounted to good discipline, that has amounted to righteousness, it's, it's building up before God. And that when he's ready, when he's seen that, you know, we are, we are consistent enough for him to be able to trust us, to take us to another dimension of glory, he said he's just going to flip the switch one day. And so just don't get tired of being right and doing the right thing and thinking, oh, this is not worth it. You know, I'm keeping myself clean. I'm trying to live a clean life and, and it still seems like I can't get ahead. No, the Bible says don't be weary in, in well-doing. You will reap in due season if you don't faint. So sin is looking for opportunities for you to drop your standard, um, to, to, to step one inch away from holiness. You know, the, the devil gets happy when we start making small compromises because he knows what he can do with a slightly cracked open door. I've put here, be careful of people with a critical spirit but don't have a prayerful spirit. Now, maybe I've jumped onto this too soon, but it's easy for us to kind of understand or to see the things that are, are wrong in people and in churches, but there's, you have to be very careful of people who operate in a spirit of murmuring and a spirit of complaining and a spirit of criticism and they don't have a prayerful spirit. When people are critical and don't have a prayerful spirit, they are cancers in your life and a cancer to the church. It's easy to spot the things that are wrong, but to have the spirit of compassion, to pray for, for people who are in the wrong, to pray for people who are doing wrong things, and who have got, got things in the right order. It's only in praying for them that we get the right attitude. This is why it is, it's good for us to be broken um, in prayer, praying for sinners, because you will not talk to sinners right, nor will you have the passion to go out and actually put your life on the line until you are broken in spirit for the people that you want to be saved. 
So be careful. Because sometimes uh, when, when it comes to doing the right thing, we can become critical of people who are doing the wrong thing. And we can get to a point where we become prideful in our righteousness. Isn't that, isn't that strange? It might sound strange, but we can become prideful doing the right thing. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But then if we're not careful, the enemy can make us prideful in the very things that are, you know, good works to be done. And we can say, oh, but that person don't even pray. That person don't even fast. We have to be very careful that those that spirit doesn't get a hold of us. The enemy is looking. The enemy will come through a door of, of, of criticism. Why? Because he's the accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. He accuses the brethren with a different spirit. There's, there's, mm -hmm. there's a spirit of observation and concern of, of shepherds and watchmen. It's not the same spirit of the accuser. The accuser points the finger and said, you know, see, they're no good people. Like the, he came, like the devil came to the Lord about Job. It was an accusing spirit. He's, he's only serving you because of the head you put around him. We, want, we don't want to join the accuser when it comes to even praying for the church and for the things that are wrong and need to be fixed. I put here that doors don't shut by willing them to be shut. It's obedience that closes the door. Righteousness builds the hedge. We talked about Job and his life. The devil got it wrong. The devil got it wrong about Job. God didn't, didn't put cotton wool around Job and all of a sudden he was protected. Job's works spoke for him. Job's works defended him. Job's integrity shielded him. It wasn't God saying, I'm going to keep him. I'm going to make sure he's super protected. The saints of God build a hedge around their own life by the way they live their life. We reap the things that we sow. If we operate in fairness, people will be fair to us. If we operate in generosity, we will reap generosity. If we operate in love, we're going to reap love. It's just how it works. Sin, I put here, must be actively dominated. And this means that we not only purpose to do the right thing, but that we reject doing the wrong things. Right? We are in trouble as holiness people when we start cutting and trimming to, to keep up with the times because the enemy knows what kind of inch we're giving up. He knows what kind of standard we're letting down. And so he can, he can, he can, he can, uh, he can go through those little cracks. You know, I've said this to, to folks before and, and, I, and I, I say it more boldly now because of, because time has proven it to be absolutely correct. A lot of our forefathers were telling folks they shouldn't, shouldn't, um, perm their hair. And folks were like, well, that's just, that's just too much control. And, you know, maybe we didn't articulate fully why that was not a good idea. But now science is telling you that that wasn't a good idea. And the people who did it and, uh, years ago now are having trouble with their hair. Now they regret the fact that they ever did that. And now we have a big natural movement. Everybody's saying, oh, be natural. Embrace yourself and love yourself. And it, it took the world and conscious movements to come back and tell us that what we were saying 20 years ago was right. But those folks that let that slide, they, they ended up letting other things slide. Those churches, I saw them. I saw them. Some says, yeah, you, know, just, you can wear stud earrings. It's fine, no problem. You go back in 10 years, <laughs> they have everything. Big earrings, small earrings. They say, oh, you know, they can, they can wear pants as long as they're loose. In 10 years, the pants are tight. I'm just saying, the enemy uses a crack. Sometimes, saints, it's, it's, it's not that it's just a sin or it's going to send you to hell. It's that you're giving an inch to an enemy who is relentless with inches. He doesn't need much to get in and, and ravage. And you can do one thing in your generation and think, yeah, it's fine, but you kill the next generation. You open the door, and now the next generation, we can't find them. Why? Because you cracked the door open. You know, I, I, I sometimes would say behind the scenes, some of our ministers, be careful for what you're leaving us. Don't leave us with a mess. We're going to have to take care of this mess. Please, just, just hold up to the standard you have. And we will stand with you. And those that don't want to, then be on them. But please, don't change the fabric. Because when you do that, you give the enemy an inch to come in. I'm talking to holiness people. This might not be for everybody. But you need to know that when you've been raised in holiness, the devil is looking for you to slip. He's looking for you. He's looking. What are you going to give me? Give me something. The Bible says that the enemy came to Christ and he found nothing in it. There was nothing he could use internally in the Christ to pull him down. The Bible says he was tempted but without sin. 
For us, it says every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust and he's enticed. I put here and talked about Rahab. This came up in one of our devotions with the children this week. Rahab was instru instructed to put a red cord in the window and at the door. The access points to her house was meant to have a sign of the blood. You need to understand that you need to protect the entrances to your life. The enemy doesn't need you. You see, and I was saying to the kids, if the enemy wants to put you in the fireplace, there's a fireplace in the, in the back of my house. If the enemy wants to take you and put you in the fireplace and you're outside the house, he doesn't invite you to the fireplace. He says, just come inside the door of the house. Just, just come in the house. His intention is to put you in the fire. But he'll say, come in the house. Then he'll say, just come down the stairs. Just come a little closer. The enemy is never advertising hell. He's never showing you the pit. He's giving you something that looks beautiful, that looks shiny, something that looks enticing. He's never showing you where he's going to take you. But the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Listen, saints, the enemy is sitting at the door of every one of our house. If we ever crack it open, you ever stop praying. You ever say, you know, you ever treat the word of God with contempt. You ever think that you don't need to pray today or you don't need to have family devotion or you don't need to, to have um, church in your house. The devil is at that door. I hope that throughout COVID, we have understood that, that church is the home. We are the church. The church is where we are. We can't wait for meetings Amen. to have church, to pray, Jesus. to sing, to worship, to lift our voice. The devil will, will sit at the door of houses that have no prayer in it, no worship. He can't live in a prayerful house. He can't live in a worshipful house. He can't dominate atmospheres where the saints are praying, where husband and wife are coming together. Please protect your house. Protect your own spirit. Protect your home with the presence of God, with prayer. And don't get tired of doing the right thing. Because the minute you stop doing the right thing, sin is watching and waiting. There's a, there's a snake, a serpent waiting to penetrate your house and to come in and to take over. I pray we will be encouraged this morning. Please, let's keep doing the right thing and don't get weary in doing well. You will reap in due season if you do not faint. God bless you today.